Hi, my name is Tony Armadillo, former art teacher and always been an artist. Uh, I have an exhibition here at K-Space Contemporary in Corpus Christi, Texas, and this is my exhibit here. My title is called My Dreams, My Nightmares, My Time in La Tierra. My challenge as an artist is not to consider what is before me in nature, such as a calm, beautiful shoreline, majestic mountains, or a mystical landscape, all of which I will paint. But for me, a greater challenge is to illustrate the powerful events that occur in life, my life, and which become my nightmares. Nightmares that center on making another human being feel that they are, they have less worth than others. We hear and we see the events on the evening news, but like a moth to a flame, I am drawn in. Then the events invade my dreams, and in many cases become my nightmares. These nightmares may haunt me throughout the day and night for days or even weeks. They continue to manifest in my mind and foster a sense of fear, anger, despair, or rage to a point that they become too real and a sense that they are now trying to overpower me. So I must now con counter these negative uh, entities through my art to gain some kind of control and maybe bring change, bring forward a sense of empathy, a simple level of respect towards one another. If not, it will take me down a deep, dark pit of despair. The portrait that's on my left here is a self-portrait. It illustrates myself going through a metamorphic change, basically identifying myself in my uh, Mexican culture, the Aztecs, and how the Aztecs had 2012, which was the end of the world as we know it. This is the end of my being on this earth. It, I go through an evolution and eventually will end up joining the, the atmosphere. You've got a dead star and the birth of a new. So when I'm gone, the cycle will continue. And that's, that's part of what this is all about right here. An evolution of myself and an evolution of life itself. All right, as you can see, there are four stages. On the original one, you, you may notice that there are some images here that reflect the Aztec culture, such as the, the collar and the figures in the background. So what's gonna happen is that there's a transition. These images start to transform into a new form and uh, my face is starting to evolve into a, basically a mask, a mask that will actually reveal itself to the world as to who I really am in the end. These images are starting to show actually a number as well, which will become the number 2012. So here's the two, the one, and then the zero. And it just continues to evolve. Back here, you have a double-headed serpent that is beginning right behind the head and comes down in this direction. Back in the background, there are portions that have part of what I wrote as, as a biography about myself. And again, everything started to engulf into my existence. So what's in the background is now becoming my being and my being is drawing back into the background. And in the last stage, I have a lot of information that's written on my shirt regarding the Aztec Indians and their beliefs and their understanding of the universe. So I am transforming into the core and I'm no longer the form that I used to be and I'm revealing myself as what we, we all are. Basically skin, bone, matter. And again, we have a clash of two different worlds. One is ceasing to exist, the other one is just beginning. So it's a, a constant evolution. And down at the bottom, it's kind of like the tree of life. And, and it just basically starts telling a little bit more about how I see life and how I see myself. All right, now this one, this is titled School H Wasteland XX. XX representing the Roman numeral 20. As an educator, 
I have 40 years of experience working with young people and one of the things that we see in the news is a lot of mass killings at school. And the best that we can do as a society is offer thoughts and prayers. But I, I reached a point after seeing so much destruction that I have to voice my opinion. And so what you're looking at here is a composition, mixed media. So I have anything from magazines to oil paints, uh, gold leaf, and as you can see on the cover, uh, built the frame with uh, police tape. It's supposed to be a tragic event. I don't want people to just offer thoughts and prayers and cease to address it. I want people to stand before this, study it, examine what has taken place. The fact that young people are losing their lives mainly because of the violence of individuals taking out their actions and destroying life. Sandy Hook is represented by the young kids that were assassinated on their campus with these police markers. So some of the markers show regular, like where the shell casings are, but many others have the faces of young kids, elementary kids, four-year-olds, six-year-olds, eight-year-old kids that were just killed at the, just the beginning of their life. And we see their smiling faces. We see how happy they look. And we kind of think that that's, like little angels, they're gone. But if you look at the actual details of people that have been ripped apart by these bullets, their bodies are mutilated. You see their faces half gone, their organs are totally destroyed. And that's what I want people to realize that some of these individuals, they had to have closed coffins because they were so brutally destroyed. This young man was one of the first casualties of Columbine. Again, XX 20 years. He's one of several people that were killed at Columbine. 20 years later, he could have had a child that had graduated from school. The young girl down at the bottom, she was recently killed. I believe she was 14, so I don't know all the details to, by heart, but I believe she was 14 when she was murdered. Very much involved in school activities. And again, killed by the weapons that we use to, to kill other lives, life forms and stuff. And looking at Vlad the Impaler being, as we know him as very, a very vicious individual, I decided to take Vlad the Impaler's method of showing his power, showing control of, of an individual's life and impaling them. So I'm showing the individuals as graphic as they look, as, as morbid as they look. And yes, I know people say that I'm probably pretty crazy or sick, but this is what I want people to witness because this is what happened to the young kids. They were not impaled, but they were brutally, brutally destroyed. Their life ceased to exist because of one weapon that seems to be the main choice a bullet and the uh, the figures continue on indefinitely I mean is this what our society is prepared to do just let it go on to infinity it doesn't seem to be addressed by anyone again the most we can offer would be our thoughts and our prayers the young lady that's hanging here uh, she has a little bracelet. The young girl that wore this, she had a regular braided uh, ankle bracelet, but I decided to change it with an infinity marker. So is, again, is this what's going to occur and reoccur, never stopping? So it's been 20 years and there's not one piece of legislation federal le uh, legislation that addresses the gun violence. Now, I, as an, as an educator, and all my fellow educators, we have to be fingerprinted. We have to take drug tests. We have to have background tests. We have to get constantly reevaluated whether we're capable to be in the classroom. And to own a handgun, almost no requirements whatsoever, not even time or anything else. But as educators, we are required to, to show our 
competency and our ability to address young people's lives. But yet for this weapon and others like this, it's just a matter of money to purchase and no restrictions. And so again, this is called School Age Wasteland XX. All right, now this one, it's an oil composition, not a mixed media like the others. This is all oil, and this is based on immigration that is taking place. It's titled, Sins of My Father Will Never Expire. So what you're seeing here is a, a young individual with two young kids, and the young girl is being apprehended, and she has no understanding as to what's taking place. Why is she being treated in this manner, but is going to, in many situations, be pulled apart from her family. Uh, and it's called, Sins of My Father Will Never Expire, based on the idea that if her father was to commit a crime, let's say, uh, steal some product at a, at a convenience store, and the kids, these young kids, would be in his vehicle, I doubted they would be charged with the same crime as the father. As the father, he should take whatever consequences. Uh, but why are the kids in this situation facing the same consequences as the father? Many of these kids, it also refers to DACA, the dreamers. And the way I see it is that many of these kids that were brought as dreamers, being at this young age or even a little bit older, they have no ability to say, I want to stay or go. They're just brought by the adult. And consequently, their, the adult's action is now their guilt as well. So they're being removed from the only country that they've ever known, and they have no right to voice their concerns or at least address the issue. So it's called Sins of My Father Will Never Expire because some of these individuals are 30, 40, 50 years of age, and yet if, if caught and demonstrate that they have no legal documentation for being here, they can or will likely be deported. So it's a, a guilt that they have to carry pretty much until something eventually happens, deported or maybe a hearing or any other situation. So uh, that's what this is supposed to illustrate. Again, since my father will never expire, referring to the young DACA individuals. In 1995, Hillary Clinton at the UN made a statement that women's rights are human rights and that human rights are women's rights. And with that in focus, I created this composition based on the events that were happening along the United States uh, border between the United States and, and Mexico. Uh, it was created as a re reference to the mistreatment that a lot of people were experiencing being held in uh, camps by the uh, ICE forces. Some of these were private entities and for profit. And there were reports that took place that caused me to create this painting and I titled it, Deported to Disaster and No One Gives a Damn. So you're looking at young people that have been separated from their adults. Some, most of these are young, young women. And a lot of these women were even separated from their newborns. They, Babies were separated from their moms, unable to breastfeed them. And a lot of the individuals here show the little charms and um, items that might be associated with the young people. There's a zip code on the side of this panel, which is uh, the number for El Paso. That was one of the main places that uh, it expressed the concerns that were taking place as far as isolationism. And a lot of the women that were either, there were claims and reported in the news that a lot of these women were abused or sexually assaulted and some were even sterilized. They had no knowledge as to what was being done to them or the procedures until afterwards, after some of the agencies found out what took place. There's also a lot of documentation that some of these young kids, uh, there's no documentation as to where they ended up, which camp or where they are. And over 200 kids are still at that time unaccounted for. So this is the composition. Individuals being treated as if they're no more than uh, a product that you would buy at a store. No consideration of human value, human 
suffrage. And again, this one was entered in the Smithsonian Portrait Gallery, National Portrait Gallery. And it was entered in December, waited through the process, and it made it through several rounds. It did not qualify for the finals, but it made it all the way through to the semifinals. So I felt pretty pleased with that, knowing how many artists nationally and internationally entered the event. So I was able to get it that far. So I'm thrilled that it was recognized both uh, for its written content and the uh, subject matter. But maybe next time. I've been asked, you know, what influences you or what artists have influenced you? I think like many of us, artists were influenced by the masters. Uh, you have people like Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, uh, definitely was a, you know, influenced by those artists. Uh, when I started really getting into my art, I started really realizing that my style of art was a little bit different. And then someone brought out the information of an artist named Dali, which I thought was Dolly, like Dolly Parton, because I had no knowledge of artists. And I found out that Dal, it's actually Dali, Salvador Dali, because of the surrealism. So I started learning a little bit about him. I could see the connection. But the more I got into the art, I started realizing uh, I have a little bit more of a connection with some female artists, German artists, Kate Kovitz, who created art in World War I, the Depression of World War II, in which she showed her life and the suffering that took place among the people that lived in Germany during this time. And so sometimes her art is regarded as gutter art because it wasn't happy, it wasn't good moments, but she just revealed what was taking place and I could relate more with her type of art. Then again, then there's another artist, another female artist, Mary Cassatt. Mary Cassatt, all her paintings, her genre was usually about women and young, young kids and that bond, that special nurturing, which was different than COVID's, but I too like to do paintings of my family's uh, kids and uh, all that, that, that's the good. And then you have uh, Frida Kahlo. And Frida's more popular now, but Frida did what she knew, which was herself, which is a combination of these other two artists. And I realized, I think, that some of my work is reflected based on these, these female artists. And then there was one more person, not an artist, Supreme Court Justice Ginsburg, because she, when asked in an interview, what was one thing that she despised or really was against, and she said, bullies. And I think a lot of my work is also based on my, just being uncomfortable, being angered, being frustrated with the bullies, the bullies that treat people with little respect, whichever one it is here, so I, unlike other artists that, you know, I've got, I think a closer tie with three female artists and a female Supreme Court just, Justice, Justice Ginsburg. So uh, I, I didn't realize that, started, started looking at the work that's here on display and started looking at my own work and said, okay, good crowd, I like them. I think the work that's here at K-Space and the title, which as you can see, it says my dreams, my nightmares, and my time in the theater. I started looking, especially at my age, I'm looking at the idea, these thoughts, these dreams have been at my core, just like COVID's, just like Frida and the others. They've been part of me, obviously, since a, a young age. And it's something I just cannot seem to shake away. And I have to address, and I figure, the work that's here hopefully will continue to have a message for some people even long after I'm gone. That someone will look at it like the one that's here in the wall that won first place in North Carolina. In the crowd, someone sent a picture because when they announced that this, this piece won first place, the person that sent me the photograph noticed that there was a young lady wearing a baseball cap, maybe high school age, that after they announced that she walked over towards the painting stood before it and he said she just stood there for about five to ten minutes just looking and considering and looking at the artist's statement so i'm hoping that that might have had some type of hopefully positive impact on her so 
I guess my time here on this planet, I'm hoping that my art in the future might have some kind of meaning towards human life and have something to offer for other people to consider. They don't have to agree, but maybe just consider it. One of the things I've always enjoyed, I mean, 40 years of teaching with young people, uh, you get to know young people and you help develop their thinking. I think personally, K-Space has an excellent program working with young people because they get, I wish I would have had an opportunity to work with artists. I, like I said, I didn't know who Dolly was until I was in college thinking it was a female. But had I had better art background, a better education in art, who knows what might have been. But uh, working with young students, one of the things that we do, we show them our process. There are a lot of great artists here in this community. And generally what I like to do is not just jump into the work, which is uh, usually what most of us might do, just start with an idea. I like to do a lot of research, research on uh, facts and information and actual research pieces and get the information down first, the facts that I want, and then composition is second. And then once composition is created, I am very much old school, very old school, which is using charcoal. I love vine charcoal. And one of the things I have my students do is not use a pencil because I would tell them it might be too restrictive. You're, you're being too precise. So using vine charcoal lets you quickly sketch out, lay things out, and you can use good values and you can make changes. And don't worry about erasing. Just smear it and just keep going over it and over it until you get it to where you see the values, the textures working for you. And I don't think you can do that necessarily with pencil, but my students really got used to working with charcoal. And then once they started with charcoal, we didn't jump into paint right away. We, we went with a neutral, generally browns or grays, and now they had to do everything as if it was a sculpture like Michelangelo, where you, you want the shading to look in the way you want it, realistic or not, but darks and lights, and start looking for uh, an understanding of eye movement and patterns. If it looks good in black and white or grays, then you're probably in, the, it makes, to me, I tell them, it makes no difference what color uh, this shirt is, or you can change the skin, but if you have the values that seem to work, then go for it. I was never concerned with being able to do the exact color uh, as a focus, rather the textures. So once, once the, the, the sketch, once the charcoal, once the foundation is done, then they apply the paint, and they apply the paint very thin, and then they build. So the whole process takes longer. For me, it's a, it's a slow, slow process. Everything's done in layers, multi-layers, multi-layers. And uh, being oil painting takes a long time uh, as well until I found out about liquid, and that does help out. But that's usually the process. And another thing that has helped some of my students is do the, the drawing on a material, whether it's paper or newsprint, to the actual size. And then we, I tell them, now you can just transfer that image it's still your drawing. You created it. We're just going to make sure that we don't waste time on the canvas. And it seems to have helped a lot of students going from, we can always tear that paper up and start over again. But once it looks good on paper, just place it, transfer it, and then jump into it. And that's another thing that has helped a lot of students as well. Just seeing the process that either that I use or other artists use, because there's so many different styles. But I think that has helped some of the students uh, I get a big jump on creating their own artwork. Okay, so I guess in closing, really would like to invite the whole public. Uh, if you're an art enthusiast, you're a young student learning art or just interested in art, come to K-Space. This particular exhibit, my work, plus many of the artists here, they're great pieces here. The work, this exhibit will be up until July 23rd. And uh, Spend time, but when you look at the work, don't just look at it, study it, examine it. Uh, not, and I'm not talking about my work. Look at everyone's artwork. Everyone has a different way of expressing. Everyone has a different way of, of documenting what they, they have experienced. Notice the colors, notice the size, notice the, the materials, 
No one is ever restricted in art that it has to be one way or you have to stay inside the lines. But you have to take chances. And sometimes seeing how other artists take chances might encourage you to take your own chance and go from there. But join is constantly giving back to the community, constantly. And so the more you get involved, the more you get back. So uh, the artists, I have yet to meet an artist that will say, no, get away, I don't wanna tell you or show you anything. Most artists are willing to just come on in, you know, show you or tell you. And so I would definitely say, you know, go online, go to K-Space Contemporary, look it up online. Uh.